on behalf of Jaipur Institute of Management, I, Shreya Rajput, final year student of MBA, batch 2019-21, welcome you to the virtual platform. A very warm welcome, sir. Thank you very, very much. Uh... I also welcome Dr. Ajit Tripathi, Associate Professor, Jaipur Institute of Management. Welcome, sir. Thank you, Shreya. So let me take you all to the journey of Jaipuri Institute of Management. Jaipuri Institute of Management is one of the best MBA college in Ghazibad, set up by St. Anandram Jaipuriya Education Society in the year 2001. During the short span of the 19 years, under the able guidance of the chairman, Sri Shisha Jaipuriya, Jaipur Institute of Management is being acclaimed as a leading business school in the northern India. Now I would like to take the opportunity to introduce our honorable guest for today, Colonel Indrajit Singh. So he is an experienced information system professional with experience of more than 27 years across wide spectrum spanning information security, risk management, cyber forensics, cyber welfare, cyber terrorism, expertise in SOC and CERT, Internet of Things, including IoT securities, blockchain and cryptonomics. He is also a council member of CET and fellow of IETE, IE, member of CSI, and executive council member, Society for Data Science, Mem Control Association, Cloud Computing Innovation Council of India. He has been consistently been awarded while in army and was awarded Magnificent CIO Year of the Year, awarded in the year 2016. An excellence award by International Police Commission, that is IPC, in the year 2019. Sir, it's an honor to have you here. A very warm welcome, sir. Over to you, sir. Thank you, Shreya, uh, and thank you, uh, Dr. Tripathi and the team of uh, Jairapuriya Institute. It's really a pleasure to be with you, be with you today and uh, talk on a topic uh, which is really concerning all of us today and in times to come, and especially uh, for the budding managers uh, who are going to be there in the industry in you know the, the later part of their life, uh, where they're going to be you know tackling with these kind of technologies. Uh, what they are going to be seeing ahead, and this is very important time when they hone their skills to the near technology. And one such technology, what we are going to, today's talk is that I will uh, have a, I have got a deck, so you know I'll go to the deck and we'll go through some of the slides, right? And thereafter, I'd like to hear from you some question answers. Uh, Talk about some practical problems which you will face, and also what are your you know queries when you are talking uh, about the blockchain. And to tell you upfront, blockchain is all about handling the way you work and how you're going to be doing the business today. Whether you're in IT, whether you're in logistics, whether you're going to be in banking, you know transportation, uh, e-commerce, your steel manufacturing plant, all your manufacturing plants work medicines, your pharma industry, everywhere, you know, you're going to be encountering the blockchain in times to come. And uh, this is the right time to learn about this technology, right? And I really appreciate Dr. Tripathi's uh, vision to you know, uh, have uh, this kind of a very interesting discussion on the blockchain for managers, uh, which will enhance your uh, thought process uh, into going ahead with this kind of technology, and especially when you're uh, going to be facing uh, uh, the interviews and uh, the, for the jobs which are there, definitely it will give you an upper edge when you're talking about this technology because uh, it will definitely give uh, a right kind of perspective to the interviewer who's interviewing you that you are future ready. Right? Uh, so that's how it's, it's going to be. Definitely, you know, you can uh, ask me and uh, I will uh, try and answer those questions in your queries. Right, so uh, with, and, and, uh, with the backdrop of what I have told you, uh, 
Blockchain primarily is going to revolutionize your business, the way you do business. That's the main, main thought process, right? And uh, how it's really working uh, in the overall technology space, that's very important for us to understand because uh, new technology comes just, all of the technologies are going to be forming part of uh, any single technology. And five technologies, or which are called the disruptive technology for the value economy, right? These are, one is IoT, we are all talking of the industrial internet of things, we are talking of IoT as such. All your manufacturing is going to be changing by the time you get into the industry. Your big data analytics is very important. I'm very sure you would have a lot of discussions on the big data analytics. AI and machine learning. So this is a time when you're seeing that you, uh, you know, machine learning also forming in front of you. Also the blockchain, right? While we talk of all these technologies, uh, whether it's a uh, IoT, I'll just show you my laser so that whether it's IoT, IIoT, your big data. AI machine learning. The baseline is a blockchain. And when I say blockchain, why? Because this is the technology which gives you the power of authentication. It power gives the power of trustless authentication, consensus mechanism. We'll be talking of all those things. And when you're doing business, blockchain is the most important the way you're going to do the business. Because when you go there, they'll be having CRMs, they'll be having other software, they'll be having other kind of databases which are there. How to validate each transaction? Even the banks, the insurance companies today, which you see, you know, you really have to struggle uh, if you have to really apply for any insurance. You, you have to struggle, give the photographs, the, you know, authenticate any accident happened or the damage happened, right? Uh, in your construction industry, for that matter, you have you know, timelines for each project which takes place at, uh, today you're doing it manually or through a SAP software. But blockchain will give you the power of the triggers, you know, where each time any milestone is reached or any incident happens, those are the kind of kind of a a violation, it will all, all tell to the, you know, the manager who's managing it. And it is across the industry. I'm just talking about construction industry or insurance industry. You put across blockchain in any industry it will work, right? That is where it's so important for a manager to know the blockchain today. Just to give, give you upfront some numbers as to, you know, how blockchain is practically going to be changing the scenario. And, you know, 10% of the, the global GDP is likely to, be, likely to be stored on the blockchain platform. That's huge. Just imagine studies which happened and they're, you know, uh, being saying about the blockchain is uh, one was by the standard, the other was a McKinsey, the other was a Gartner. And what each one of them have to say is that blockchain technology could reduce banks' infrastructure costs by 15 to 20 billion a year by 2022. Just see, that's the kind of uh, you know, value addition which you're going to have through the blockchain itself. McKinsey, what, they, what do they say? Blockchain has a potential to save, save global financial industry up to $110 billion, huge, if you go by the numbers, right? The World Economic Forum, as per them, the tax collected for, you know, like you, you're all aware in, in, in India, we really struggle to, you know, do the tax collection and uh, it's a big pain. And if you're having a blockchain, it will solve a lot of purpose or a lot of problems of the blockchain. And as for the Gartner, 
10 strategic technology trends for 2019 for the blockchain. That, uh, the, that's very important because Gartner does a study every year. It gives the details of what are the technologies which are there and which you need to focus. And why I'm saying so, these figures should excite you if right on track when we talk about the blockchain today. And while we talk of the blockchain, you know, it's all about your distributed ledgers. I will discuss about what a distributed ledger is all about. It is all about the security of your transaction. It's all about the anonymous transactions. It's all about transactions being, you know, kind of uh, consensus based transactions. It's all about, you know, analytics. It talked about uh, it also about the immutable. To just to explain what blockchain is by saying a blockchain, you'll not understand this. Uh, if I take a very crude example of your you know, grandmother who sews a, a sweater, and you have seen that. She is by layer. And if there's a single mistake in that swing of the sweater, she has to really undo it, go back and try and repair that kind of you know, problem which occurred. That means anything which is happening in the blocks cannot be undone. That's the beauty of this blockchain. And that is why while I told all this uh, kind of terminologies, whether it's a distributed ledger, I'll just explain you what's a distributed ledger all about. That's uh, anonymous transactions, pseudo anonymous transactions, right? So I'll be just explaining to you in a more you know, deliberate manner. And this is all about the trust and ensuring data, right? That's the data which is available to you. And what advantages is give it, gives it to you? It's immutable. That means once any data which is created, once any entry which is created, it cannot be changed, right? And it is secured. It is append only digital ledger. So whatever is in the, the digital ledger, and I'll just, in the next slide, I'll just show you what's a digital ledger all about, how the ledgers we really work. It's about leveraging encryption. It's with the business logic and rules, so you have very set logics which is there for the company or industry, and you can put it. And that's what I was telling you. You know the example of construction industry, insurance industry. So you have the business rules, you have the business logics. Based on those logics, all your software will work. And one of the the major part of blockchain is smart contracts. Smart contracts are the softwares which really enforce the business business logics and rules and it is geo distributed uh, distributed consensus why i'm saying it's a geo distributed it can happen anywhere in the world it's not compulsory that you know everybody has to be at the same place so they're all distributed all across the world and you're still able to make those transactions and there are abundance of use cases which are there so practically blockchain is or major transformational you know, technology, which is there, major disruptive technology, which is there. And what internet did to IT, you know, and we are seeing so much of internet happening all across, you know, for the last you know, three decades, so much of things which we have changed. It's the same way blockchain will do for the trusted transactions. And, and believe you me, by 2030, it's a total dynamics which is going to change using the blockchain. Even for that matter, the way you do business and the internet, what you're seeing, you know, most of the internet which is there is a client server architecture. By 2030, we are anticipating it's going to be a distributed architecture based, you know, internet which is going to be there. So it's going to revolutionize everything. And 
when did this start? So blockchain started somewhere in 2008 and it was based on the paper by Satoshi Nakamoto. This is a person who actually was the brainchild behind writing a paper on the digital currency, right? And first Bitcoin was mined in somewhere in September uh, of 2009, right? Where the Bitcoin journey started. And I think most of you may be knowing what the Bitcoin is all about. And what it was entailing, what was the problem it was solving? It was removing all the intermediaries. So when you perform a digital, it was happening directly. So in a, in a case of a Bitcoin, you don't have to have you know any intermediate person or a agency which is there. And blockchain is the underlying technology, you know, which is using the Bitcoin. So you have a bank or a PayPal or a credit card uh, agency which is there, you practically don't have to go through them. All transactions will happen, you know, distributed peer to peer. And these nodes can be there all across the world, anywhere. Right? So it's not compulsory that they are to be centrally located. And the blockchain, right, are synonymous. We try to use it. Bitcoin is a digital currency and blockchain is the underlying technology for the Bitcoin, right? So that's the Bitcoin and the blockchain. So you never get confused between the blockchain and a Bitcoin. So blockchain is not a Bitcoin, okay? And blockchain is all about peer-to-peer -peer network of replicated databases. And what is the definition of blockchain? It is a blockchain that allows untrusting parties, right, with common interest to create a permanent, unchangeable, and transparent record of exchange and processing without relying on the central authority. So you don't have any central body which is authenticating any of your transactions. It's a peer to peer. So all the peer are called the ledgers or the nodes, right? And they are the ones who are approving any transaction and once it takes place. They're transparent records. So any transaction which happened, it's transparent to everyone across the you know, network. And they are permanent, like I told you, you cannot change it once. So this is one Khata book kind of you know ledger which we all know we have been seeing this all across. And you know, if you look at it, if this book is with me, I'm the owner of this book, I can change any transaction when required. Right, and there's nobody to question me. Right, so anybody who owns a record in the normal way, right, was kind of the owner of that record. Okay, these are called the ledgers in the terminology of blockchain, and these ledgers are they're all across the world, and these are called the nodes which are happening. So, at an average, uh, if you go by the numbers, so there are around 16 to 17,000 nodes which are there all across the world, right? And anytime whenever you are doing a transaction, just imagine each line, if you write those nodes, if you have to undo any transaction, right? That transaction has to be updated all across the complete network. This is the power of the blockchain. So what it gives, you know, it's a temper proof, shared ledger, it records the transactions and they're all peer to peer. And any transaction which is confirmed or validated in these blocks, right, they are linked and they're chained from the big really world. And that is why it's 
called blockchain. So it's a block after block, right? And, and those blocks once it's written, they cannot be removed. Because if you try to remove from the chain, it's a Herculean task for yourself. So what practically happens? It's a peer-to-peer. -peer. There is no central body. So whatever transaction you're doing, it's distributed. So just imagine these are all, all nodes all across the world, right? And these trans they are updated. And once they are updated, they ensure the data integrity, right? And these are the kind of transactions. If you look on the left side of the slide, these are the transactions. And these are the kind of blocks which keep getting added. All these, all these blocks are kind of, you know, updated one after the other. Right? Just to give you an example of a, a similar kind of thing in a different scenario. So these are the kind of nodes all across again, right? And anybody wants to do a transaction from A person to D, B person. So this is the person who wants to do a transaction. So whatever he wants to do it, he does that in an encrypted manner, sends it to the node, okay? That information is updated with his signatures and the transaction is completed to the other person, the person B, who is the key, he can only get that, you know, value or that transaction and whatever transaction is happening it is updated so if you look at it this is a transaction which was supposed to be done that is n547 is updated to everyone once this transaction is completed it gets updated after 45 46 47 and this keeps on adding and this is available across the board right so how does it really work three parts to it one is it's a distributed ledger, which I was trying to say, the one which I showed it to you. So what is a distributed ledger? Distributed ledger is basically a record of agreements, records of the consensus, right? So any case, if you're doing any transaction, there's a agreements which are there, you know, that's all it will happen. They use, you know, the secure cryptographic keys. Lots of cryptographic is involved when we talk of a blockchain and each distributed ledger has got an immutable record which gets maintained and they are validated by second part is the consensus consensus means that every one or the, all the nodes in the network they have to give the consent right that this entry is valid. Once this entry is valid, there's a block which gets added. And most important part of it, of the blockchain, that's a visibility. And when we say, when a transaction is added to the ledger, right, the network is, you know, almost instantly privy to these kind of new transactions which are happening. So those transactions are visible to everyone, like I'm trying to tell you. And they are very transparently seen by everyone, right? And there's a, almost a trail which is left behind. Every time a block is created, there's a timestamp which gets created, there's a hash values which are created, there's a complete trail which gets created for each transaction, okay? And all parties in the network keep a copy of their view of the ledger, so it cannot be under so that's the most important part uh, these are some of the technology bases i will not go on to this slide in more detail but just to tell you it's about the distributed databases which are trying to understand and all the transactions are, are you know validate and private keys you really don't have to think of that but it's all keys which make blockchain happen they have the hash algorithms which are there and they have the peer-to-peer -peer architecture. And like I told you, uh, there are very specific programming languages which are used for blockchain. So it's not the 
uh, routine languages what we use. So they have, there are different languages which are there. People have to really work on them and while they're working on the blockchain technology. Just to give you an uh, overall concept of what a ledger is, what a blockchain is, and how the component of a blockchain is the smart contract, right? So again, to give you the point about distributed, geographically distributed, spread across multiple cities, countries, and institutions, remember that. And there is no single set administrator when we talk about consensus means that each one of the node give a can say yes this block is valid okay and second part of the blockchain is most important that's the smart contract or computer program which facilitate it very verifies and enforces the negotiation or a contractual agreement so this is the main so uh, this is uh, this i have already i think covered i did not develop on this so uh, when we talk of the the components again okay, it's about the shared ledger it's about the smart contract which i told you okay it's about the consensus and the privacy this advantage of uh, the blockchain uh, about the visibility about the transactions are secure they authenticated they are verifiable right and the advantage of blockchain using this kind of four parts which i've told you is a broader participation of different businesses and implementation for you know you really don't have to really check your softwares and uh, again and again for giving the triggers they're all self very high in your business time whenever you're using, using it right so the benefit it's what blockchain gives you it gives you a trustless exchange of data you really don't have to trust each other because like i told you if there are going to be 16000 to 70000 nodes all across the world you can't trust any one of them so it's a trustless uh, trustless exchange empowers users for doing a transaction even in a trustless exchange. Pretty high quality data. It gives reliability, it gives longevity, it gives the durability of uh, any transaction. Of course, the transparency and immutability Again and again, I'm trying to say you know, transactions in your companies. You'll have real, right? Ecosystem simplification becomes because can you see it? Yes, sir. Can you see? Yeah, okay. Yes. So I was just telling you about one was a smart contract, which are very important for us. And uh, uh, they are the ones which trigger any transaction to happen. And there are a large number of technologies which are available today for the blockchain. So I've just listed out a couple of them which are important. And you would have also heard the name that's uh, very uh, you know, commonly used today. You would have heard the name of Ethereum, Ripple, OpenChain, Slock.it, Agur, Hyperledger, right? These are the very common ones which are there. And then there's something which is coming up very latest is the OpenChain. Then is the Chainlink is important. 
one blockchain technology which is going to revolutionize the financial industry that's called defi it's called the distributed financial you know, blockchain so it just started and uh, the amount of money which people have been pumping in into uh, the defi today is phenomenal and it's you know being said that next 10 years or so you are not going to be seeing the the financial industry the way it is today uh, it's all going to be on a decentralized distributed financial uh, you know uh, platform defi so that's the kind of discussions which are already happening so if you are interested on working on any of these platforms these are pretty good but when you go to the your companies of late you will be encountering these names most commonly what you'll be seeing is uh, ripple or ethereum that's uh, being used in a lot of companies or also you know hyperledger so that's the one which is used so what is happening today in any company you have a centralized system and you have a block a blockchain based decentralized system so when you say a centralized system these are very complex and they are all susceptible to human errors and frauds and you have to really depend on a lot of intermediaries for validation and create you know it creates a lot of inefficiencies in the complete process there are delays and there is a potential loss of for all the stakeholders so this is the pitfalls for the centralized system when we talk of in any industry and when we say we are going to have a blockchain based decentralized system it's going to be a shared ledger that is tamper proof okay and once any transaction that is recorded cannot be altered and all parties they have to give consensus to a new transaction that is added to the network and it also reduces the paperwork the processes and it speeds up the transaction uh, these are the advantage of having a blockchain in company. and while you are going into the companies it's you you are going to see it all across so this is what actually happens it's stored in ledgers record of every transaction which is there everyone in the network has a individual identical copy which happens and the ledger can only be updated by network consensus and it cannot be altered or deleted without the knowledge of the whole network right so uh, these are the benefits for the enterprise distributed architecture eliminating the need of uh, the green consign eliminated the need to reconcile disparate permission right and they are secured so no one not even a system administrator can delete any data or the files in this case so that's the advantage which you have and each member of the network has a access right so that confidential information can be shared on need to know basis so not all have all the rights to them too, right so there are two kind of blockchain uh, because you may be thinking that if you have a company so for example bank so you don't really can put all the data of the bank on a public ledger all all the 17000 nodes which i spoke of so there are two models which can work one is called the public blockchain network which i told you the bitcoin ethereum so all across your data is updated and the other you know when it working in an organization it's called a permissioned blockchain or a private blockchain right and these private blockchains work on hyperledger arthricoda right ethereum so those are the ones which are working in a company so you really don't have to send the data out of your company itself so these are the nodes which gets created within the company and you can work on a blockchain in that manner and one more factor which you will see you will have different applications say for example hr your database of your company your crm your company uh, 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 you know uh, systems which are there all these softwares today are working on different platform maybe a oracle different databases sap you know by using blockchain you can make all the softwares which are working today in silos in a very integrated manner so the 
points which I've told you earlier that you'll get a transparency, ease of working, re uh, reduction in the time of your you know, processes. So the silos, which were time consuming earlier, now you can work in an integrated way to give you a faster transaction. So that's the advantage of a permissioned blockchain network, right? So by using these kind of blockchain, you can have business processes process the trust boundaries without any problem. You can have your supply chain, you can have your third party uh, companies all onto the blockchain and have transactions done without any problem. You can have multiple parties, you know, work off the same database, right? Without the uh, kind of hitch of losing the data. Okay, and like I told you, there's no single body which is going to be uh, having the control of the data. So, and it has got a kind of lot of advantages when we are addressing a very specific enterprise needs. And this process involves a very low value, manual verification steps, so those kind of things which, you know, are overcome. So, what is today and what's going to be tomorrow using the blockchain? So what's happening is today you have the multiple versions of trust to a single source of truth, right? You have in transparency across systems to complete transparency, which is going to be there. You're going to have the batch processing to 24 seven real time processing. You'll have multiple system vulnerabilities to hack resistance. So one thing which I didn't cover up is very important. Everybody talks of the cyber attacks every day on systems. Blockchain is one where it's susceptible to the cyber attacks. Why? If you have to have a cyber attack on a blockchain, you really need to control 51% of the nodes to undo the transactions, which is not possible, right? So it is susceptible to the cyber attacks. You know, to give you an overall perspective of how blockchain is going to be there in times to come. And this was the hype curve of Gartner, which came in July 2019. And if you look at it, there's so many technologies which you're going to be seeing kind of five to 10 years. Okay. So whether it's a blockchain for lead generation, blockchain for advertising, for customer services, decentralized automation, your business models, right? Tokenization, blockchain for retail, blockchain for media, blockchain in oil and gas, blockchain in utilities, blockchain in gaming, in healthcare, regulation, you know, transportation, logistics, supply chain, everywhere you're seeing most of the technologies are, you know, five to 10 years, we are going to see the light of the day, right? That's very important. So when you're uh, uh, getting industry ready, you should know what's going to happen in times to come. What's there on the plateau is already the smart contracts, which I told you they're really working very well, right? Then you have the, the cryptocurrency custody services that's working and blockchain rewards, loyalty models, like you have, uh, you know, warranties for your normal products. So that's uh, the kind of technology which we are seeing it next two to five years, okay? And the technology which we are already seeing happening in front of us, is the distributed ledger which I brought it up. Okay. So these are the kind of technologies what we are going to see in times to come for blockchain. So be ready for that. And in terms of the numbers, if you look at it, from 21 to 2023, we are seeing a lot of transactions which are going to happen. And while we are going to be there in the you know proper disillusionment. We see by 2030, it's almost 3 trillion, you know, kind of market valuation of blockchain, which is there on the end, right? So this is the potential what we have for blockchain. So if you're, uh, when you are a CEO, when you are, you know, driving any technology in the company in times to come, when you're there in the industry, be aware of these kind of numbers, which is there. This is how the blockchain is really going to grow, right? To by 2030. 
So if you look at it by 2020, 2022, uh, it's going to be almost $10 billion worth. Okay. And by 2026, it's going to add uh, quite a bit to 360 billion and it's going to surge to 2030 by 3.1 trillion. So I'll skip this slide. So uh, when you're selecting on any technology, uh, like I told you, there are different kind of blockchains which are available. One is uh, the permissionless blockchain that's across world, uh, across the nodes which are world across. They are permissioned blockchain, which is within your organization, private blockchain, public blockchain. So uh, you have to select which technology fits you the best, right? So this is the kind of uh, graph which is there and if you try to evaluate uh, based on your you know, availability, your uh, transparency, your transaction, which blockchain which you need to uh, you know, adopt for your company, definitely you can have a look at it and you know, work on those lines. So like I was trying to say in the Gartner scale that uh, it's addressing a lot of industry. So blockchain is going to be addressing number of industries. Whether it's your escrow and custody services, your supply chain and trade finance, very important, right? Or your customer acquisition and loyalty, financial securities, your logistics, your intellectual property rights, your, your real estate and property, your legal, your insurance, your digital rights management, your supply chain management, your identity management, uh, you know, file storage, your internet of things. Everywhere, if you talk of it, blockchain has a major role to play. Right? So uh, this is how we really have to, uh, you know, think of how we are going to be using the blockchain. And when we, you know, really go go on to the different industry and see how each industry is really benefited. Say for example, I've just highlighted, say in the example of manufacturing, I say supply chain transparency is a major pain point. This is the blockchain going to address. Your asset tracking, your dy dynamic competitive pricing. In retail, you have the advantage of, you know, product proof, your digital rewards, your, your ticket purchases, everywhere you can you know, use blockchain. Insurance, claims management, property payment, your fraud detection, automated underwriting, real-time insurance. So that's the advantage. In banking and capital market, you have similarly, one major point is the KYC and the anti-money laundering, your audit compliance, loans uh, syndication, right? In government, your licensing and IDs, like your health cards today, your even Aadhaar card for that matter can be a blockchain based. Your voter cards can be blockchain based. You know, your aid tracking, your military security, your copyrights, even your thesis for that matter can be blockchain based, right? Even your degrees so that nobody, you know, is able to fudge the degrees. That can be used you know, you're using the blockchain. Then in health, lots of applications which are there. So, you know, Blockchain is, in a sense, going to be affecting every industry, every sector in some form or the other. Your land records is uh, a blockchain, right? So bigger advantage. So one scenario which I just want to touch upon, uh, like you have the food contamination scenario, right? Just imagine that. And if you have to transport food to different part of the world, and you don't want that food to be contaminated. How are you going to be using blockchain to uh, avoid that? So you have, say for example, you have a food producer in some country, and once that food is being food processed uh, is being done, it's a blockchain is implemented, and there's a smart contract which is actuated. It says if the temperature goes less than ten degree and humidity is less than 65%, the person or the carrier or the intermediary has to be penalized. So this is the complete cycle of the supply chain of a particular you know, food product. 
And once it goes through, it keeps checking, right? It says green, that means it's perfectly fine. It's being maintained. From the carrier, uh, you know, carrier one to warehouse, it's maintained. Carrier two is perfectly fine. But at carrier two, when it's, you know, packed and trying to send it, the temperature goes up and, and the humidity goes up, right? Beyond the limit before it reaches the retail store. So if it is not meeting the, uh, you know, conditions, the smart contract gets updated and the condition is violated. So what happens now is the carrier two who is responsible for maintaining the temperature and humidity of the package, right? Beyond a prescribed limit is penalized for not doing his job. And this application, you can use it even in your medicines when you have to send a cancer medicine, very peculiar temperature, humidity, you really need to maintain. And uh, you know anyone violating it will be penalized. You come to know, you can keep the uh, you know, records of it. And now you come back to my first slide, which I showed it to you. The other technology which are enabling it. So they have the IoT sensor, they have the RFID tags which are there. You have the data analytics which is there. You have the AI which comes into play. You have the you know uh, machine learning which is there. So blockchain is part of that technology space, right? And it is enabling the way we do the business, right? So this is how blockchain really works. And it gives a, a pretty good example uh, kind of advantage for any user. And similarly, you can put it for anything for your uh, issue of uh, insurance, right? So there are different processes which can be there. You can have the blockchain uh, incorporated in those processes uh, where you can, you know, your driving license and your, uh, your other points can be checked. Similarly, you have, you know, uh, other examples of uh, uh, shared of reference data which comes up, uh, you can check out that. Uh, there's a supply chain which I already told you uh, where we can put it. Uh, you know, airlines industry is pretty good example uh, which can uh, be where it can be used and it gives you a, a kind of improvement in system utilization. And in case any faulty part is there, it can be identified. Spurious parts can be identified. Your car industry, where you have a problem in India of spurious components, that can be identified using blockchain, right? So, uh, like the car manufacturer can really identify each component which is being produced, which date it was produced, which vehicle it was being done, uh, used, what is the the life cycle of that? So those can be you know managed using the blockchain. Your audit and compliance, you can have. Uh, you, you can use the blockchain. So it really reduces the cost of audit and regulatory compliances and it provides and you know uh, really a big advantage uh, for the, the compliance teams uh, to handle the situation very effectively. All right. And letter of credit, this is from the business point of view uh, while you do a, a international business altogether, you know the letter of credit is very important. You know so using the letter of credit, using a blockchain, you can speed up the complete process of your business. Even while shipping any component from uh, a, a port to a B port, you know, it takes two months to send your papers. Using the blockchain, you can do it almost in near real time of all the transactions of shipping the product. So, Lots of examples which are there. So I'll stop here. And uh, if you have any questions, so I'll love to take on your questions on the blockchain and your usage in the industry where you're going to be you know, moving next. So any, any questions, please. Thank you so much, sir, for the insightful session. So the first question is from Rashmi Raj. Uh, it is that uh, she has heard that these artificial coins are banned in India. Although these coins are helped a lot, so I just want to know that why these coins are banned in India? Artificial coins are cryptocurrencies. So she has written artificial coins. 
She is asking about the bitcoins, I suppose. Okay, I'll just tell you that's the currency. Yeah, so yeah. I'll, I'll I'll tell you about that. So see, it's like this. While we spoke of uh, the blockchain, we also have just touched upon the cryptocurrency, and cryptocurrency came in two thousand nine. And why it is banned in India? Because there is no central authority for managing this cryptocurrency. Okay. Uh, that's the reason we have a fear that it can be used for money laundering. It can be used for terror funding. It can be used for hawala transactions. That is why this, you know, currencies, we banned it. And uh, we said we will not go ahead with it. Out of the 70 countries which are there, cryptocurrency is uh, some places, it's they already, you know, authenticated the currency. They have come up with a proper cryptocurrency exchanges like in the case of Japan, uh, like in the case of uh, Australia, uh, in US is 50-50, Switzerland, you know, you'll be surprised all the transactions are using the cryptocurrency. Even if you do, uh, you know, take your birth certificate, you all the services which are there, driving license, you pay it through cryptocurrency, right? Uh, in India, we took a call uh, because of various reasons which are there in India, you are all aware of. The, the geopolitical situation in India. Uh, so that's why it's being put on hold for the time being. Definitely, it's not going to be uh, not coming in India. It may come in India with a different name. Maybe, a, you know, uh, the RBI was trying to come up with a Lakshmi currency called Lakshmi uh, digital currency. So that will be a different kind of uh, set which is going to be there. But right now, it was not the time where we were thinking of having the currency, uh, the cryptocurrency in a legalized manner. Yes, please. Thank you, sir. So the next question is, how blockchain technology can be used in education sector? Yeah, fantastic. And I was, I touched upon it uh, very cursory. Uh, in India, you are all aware that uh, there are two kind of call. One is the results. Second is your thesis, your, you know, uh, and the third problem is uh, your uh, degrees, which are there. There are so many uh, institutes where they give fake degrees and, and they will also have an MBA degree. How do you validate that particular degree, whether it's a you know, valid institute or it's a fake degree? Now, if you have uh, a, a blockchain based degree, right? Not that degree cannot be manipulated any time in point in time in your life. Even after 30 years, 40 years, when you grow old, that degrees validation will remain. Okay. And that is where is important. Number one point. Number two point, what is happening is a lot of thesis work, which is happening today. There's a lot of cut, copy, paste to write papers and theses and, you know, people manipulate things. And they say that the ownership part of it. And uh, despite you have put in a lot of effort, a person steals your data, steals your knowledge set, and, you know, puts it with just a small different name and publishes a paper or thesis. Okay. Now, or the IPR, because that has contains the IPR, the intellectual property, right? The copyrights, which you have. Blockchain gives you a major advantage of, you know, blocking these kind of copyright violations, your thesis copying, uh, somebody stealing away your, you know, uh, hard work, what you put in all. So these are the kind of uh, things which, are there in education sector. Education sector is a major one uh, I perceive that way. Thank you so much, sir. Right. Uh, and there's one, is, yeah. Yes, yeah. please. The next question is, what will be the future job scenario for B-School graduate when these technologies are applied in the field of finance? Right. Uh, like I told you that you have to be future ready. And when I say that uh, you should be aware of the blockchain, uh, give, to give you an example, uh, one of the largest bank in India, they were trying to do the swift you know, transactions through blockchain. They want to have all the checks authenticated through blockchain, all the transactions are happening through blockchain. Right. Now, if you know these kind of technology, so when you're going to those industries, you'll be enabled, you're, you would have enabled yourself with this kind of technology, when they when you're using it, it will be very easy for you. Number one point. Secondly, to understand about these technologies in finance will be very important. 
like I was trying to tell you about the insurance sector, right? Uh, in in a, a, even in finance, I'll give you an example where uh, blockchain is being used very aggressively now. It's called the eKYC. For example, say you know you you're going to a bank, and you have four different kind of you know products which are there. One is a car loan, one is a home loan, one is a insurance, and it also gives you that uh, I, uh, kind of policies which are there. Each time when they do KYC of a person that costs them a 600 rupees to 800 rupees, right? Now, and but the company is the same, the bank A is same, right? 800 rupees every time they're spending. If they're using a blockchain based eKYC, now they do the eKYC only once, the data is validated only once, and all other, you know, product partners who are there within the bank itself, they don't need to do that KYC again and again of the person. They can use the same data. Okay, So just see how much of money which is being saved in that eKYC itself. Right? That's very important for banks. So they, as a banking segment which is there, the cost of transaction is a major challenge for banks. The cost of eKYC is a major challenge for banks. Right, so this is where blockchain really helps them. And third is like you know people trying to steal money. If if any transaction which happens, uh, anytime you know there's a bank heist or there's a cyber attack which happens now, uh, some of the hackers they try to steal the data and you know take the money to say Singapore or you know countries of North Korea. Now with a blockchain, what they can do is you can track where that money is going, which bank that money is going. So there's a system called SWIFT for all the inter international transactions. So SWIFT, if happens with a blockchain-based SWIFT system, they'll all get protected. All your transactions get protected. So see the advantage of uh, blockchain when it being used in the banks. Similarly for insurance, right? Now you may have a fake claim for insurances coming up. You may have, you know, uh, claims which are kind of uh, lots of them which. Uh, getting through is becomes very difficult as a normal person. But if you have a blockchain based uh, insurance, your one, your insurance claims will get passed very easily because if there is a safe example, there's an accident, uh, that blockchain, you can intimate the car uh, manufacturer or your car, uh, you know, uh, dealer that there's an accident which happens. He validates the complete cost of it based on that cost. You know the insurance company is being intimated immediately. It gets validated through the the uh, the car uh, dealer and the insurer that what is the cost. If it's a valid cost, you know you get the money back. So that's how it really happens. So what's our advantage? Each if I take each you know sector by sector, each uh, component by component. So everywhere we find uh, blockchain gives a lot of advantage. Thank you so much, sir. It uh, was a great uh, session indeed. I must say that all our MBA students uh, will have the insight of the blockchain technology and uh, how this technology is going to affect their uh, professional life. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so right. much. Sreya, you may proceed. Thank you very for, much, and I'm very sure, yeah. Uh, you may proceed for the formal word of thanks, Sreya. Uh, on the behalf of Jaipuri Institute of Management and the entire fraternity of Jaipuri Institute of Management, I'm very thankful to you, sir, for this insightful session. I hope uh, all these thoughts and would definitely help us for our future events. Thank you so much for your time, sir. Definitely, definitely, and all, all the best to all of you. Thank you. And stay, uh, say, uh, stay safe, everyone. Right. Yes. Sir. So, uh, hope to see you again. Thank you, Dr. Tripathi. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.